Hello and welcome to Hadoop Exam Interactive Training. In this session, we are going to cover HDFS design where we will see where to use HDFS and where not to use HDFS. And secondly, we will see fundamentals of HDFS where we see what is blocks, name node and other services means in the HDFS. Then we will see rack awareness philosophy in the HDFS. Uh, then how to read write files in HDFS file system and we'll and then deep dive in HDFS federation high availability of HDFS then parallel copying using this CP etc and in last we also see some HDFS command line interfaces so let's start with the HDFS design first too. okay so in HDFS design uh, let me write the topic name HDFS design so as we have discussed previously as soon as your data volume grow your data keep increasing and it reaches like in terabytes or petabytes it is difficult to store this whole file in a single machine this whole file in a single machine because the capacity of this single machine is 25 250 gigabytes so what to do now so in such situation we can divide this file and store 250 gigabytes in each machines and we could have four separate physical machine where we can store this file okay so these are the four computers or four machines uh, which is capable of storing 250 gigabytes each so your file can be stored in four part to this four computer so the system which actually store your single file in multiple com com machines is called distributed file system. Dead file system. So from the Hadoop, it is called Hadoop distributed file system. When you want to store your file in a Hadoop based environment. So and once this file stored on multiple machines so there is a communication required among this machines so and to handle this communication there's lot of networking comes into the picture but however if you use HDFS so you don't have to have to deal with networking coding it is already handled by the HDFS client and HDFS itself okay so this way we can say uh, you divide your whole file into multiple part and store on uh, different uh, one or more machines it is required distributed file system so Hadoop uses one distributed file system which is based on Google file system uh, and this is called HDFS so let's say uh, this is the design of uh, we can say uh, how basic design not exactly in depth design uh, of HDFS so let's see benefit of using HDFS or where to use HDFS as some of things we have already discussed in this like very large files as we have already discussed then you use HDFS secondly streaming data access what streaming data access means streaming data access means whenever you want to read data in in lot 
not lot in bigger volume so you need some uh, system which can give you high throughput to read bigger volume of data and rather than reading a single record so and what i can say like here if you just need to write once but read many times so you will read the whole data in huge volume gigabytes at a time so in this case this is good to use and secondly uh, the, you you don't want to use expensive hardware because as you we have already discussed in our previous session it's like hdfs works on commodity hardware hardware so you want to save your cost it cost let's say then you can use hdfs so these are the basic things where we should consider using the HDFS file system but the places where we should not consider the HDFS like whenever you want to have low latency access. Low latency access means whenever you want to read from whole file system single record in milliseconds or something. So in such scenario hdfs is not good then you should consider something else like hbase database which is also based on hdfs and we will see in later session how to use the hbase and what is the purpose of hbase so the basic things here like if you need faster access and uh, delete insert or something functionality then you should consider using HBS. so whenever you require low latency access please avoid using HDFS second is lot of small files if you have thousands of or millions of sorry not thousand millions of small files so then it is not good to use uh, HDFS why we'll see when we can uh, uh, let's see there is a one master node name node which store uh, metadata information in RAM we'll see in detail how this for each and every file so there are millions of files and each and every files metadata is stored in the RAM and the RAM capacity will not be able to handles so many files so we should consider in avoiding in the hdfs file system when there are a lot of small files the next is parallel write or arbitrary rate then avoid using hdfs because SDFS will always write, suppose your file is already written up to this, at the end of this file and keep adding on this file. So you cannot write at the start of the file or parallel write is possible on this file. So whenever you have to write in parallel then please then kindly avoid using HDFS so these are the uh, points where we should consider using HDFS and where we should not use HDFS let's pick up next topic that is fundamental of HDFS HDFS so first pick up the blocks in each and every file system even you consider Linux base or something on Windows file system 
every file is in underlying file system is divided into the blocks whenever you have to write a bigger file to file system is internally divide into the blocks and generally block size is 512 bytes on the most of the operating system and this bytes is this blocks is actually written to the file system in, and whenever you read it again so your file system will merge this whole block and re return you the file system or block by block it will return you the file and so your client will actually uh, create a single file and again process the same file which you have already written similarly hdfs also has a concept of blocks but here block size is very huge almost 64 mb is the default block size and some of the clusters are having 120 mb of block size this is depend on the requirement and reading writing capacity and cluster size many things needs to be considered when we consider the block size so suppose you have a file this is the file which size is let's make it rounding 6400 mb so whenever you send this file to store in hdfs file system it will be first divided into the 100 block by the hdfs client or hdfs itself and these blocks are stored on the hdfs so this is the block of the uh, hdfs file system suppose assume your file is smaller than 64 mb this file is less than 64 mb then what happens then will it occupy the full one block of 64 mb uh, suppose your file is 50 mb and you want to store this file so it will occupy the full 64 mb answer is no because hdfs is optimized for this purpose and it take all it will make the block only 50 mb size in such case so even the file smaller than 64 mb it is create a block of the smaller size and stored into the hdfs let's see the next fundamental or concept of hdfs this is daemon services hdfs hdfs has three daemon services running one is name node second is secondary name node and third one is data node So these are the daemon services let's pick up the first one is the name node and then we'll see the others later after that hdfs is based on google file system and the architecture is almost similar so the architecture of hdfs is master slave architecture so there is always one master in HDFS that is called name node. This is the name. This is the master. And there are some slave nodes. So slave are always more than one. So these are the slave nodes. Let's see here. Only four name uh, slave node i'm creating and this name node are is uh, sorry this slave node are called data node okay so this is dn1 this is dn2 something like dn3 and dn4 so this four data node. so this is master you can see the king and these are all slave
and and so what is the purpose of each master and slave load uh, so let me draw on the clean piece this thing so suppose you have a, a one file like file one dot txt and whose which size is like um, let's say sixty four multiplied by three equal to one ninety two and so it would be divided into three block a b and c and you want to store this file so there is a name node first this is name node and there are four data node and you want to store this file into the hdfs so this all are on hdfs okay it is we are discussing hdfs already so your client or client hdfs client and this is you which using hdfs client and want to store this file so you, you first your go first contact with the name node and ask I want to store this file. So in this situation, HDFS will guide. Like there is, it has the information. Like there are four uh, data node: TN one, TN two, TN three, and TN four. Based on some information, it will return. Like you can write this file on one. Two and three data node. So now, this client will directly contact to data node one and pick up this. Uh, ask to data node one to store in TN one, okay. and it will store block A in TN, and it will return. Uh, it will ask to be ready to store this block A to be stored on this node. And it will return yes i'm ready you can send me the block okay so this way this communication happens. let's we will see later on how actual full write happens on the hdfs so whenever this inf this information is sent to data node so this this name node has metadata information where the whole file is stored so it will has information like file one is stored on a b and c data node 1 2 and 3 and suppose you similarly you have another file 2.txt and you want to store it and similarly for simplicity simplicity assume it has e f and g block so it stored this block into data node 2 3 and 4 so this is e f and g so it will has this metadata information like file 2 is stored on 2 3 and 4 so this is the uh, master node which has the whole information where the each file is stored on the cluster so this is in we can say this is bookkeeper which has the information the most important thing here is like this whole metadata information is stored and ran okay and suppose this name node crashes so what happens you will lose the whole cluster where the data is stored information because this information is not persisted anywhere so that is why in generation one Hadoop was 
considered a single point of failure this is the disadvantage yeah but there are lot of work around we can say is there to handle this situation we will see in next few few moments and other in generation 2 it is quite Im it is very well improved and handled in hadoop to such thing avoid such single point of failure so this is the uh, basic use of a uh, name node and data node so let's deep dive into this daemon services and let me draw it again the same architecture and deeper a little bit more difficult to so this is your name node which has master architect master and generally your cluster look like this as we have discussed it would have rack so let's consider we have two rack rack one and rack two okay and each rack has data node 1 2 and 3 1 2 and 3 your d1 d2 d3 d4 d5 and d6 these are the data and there is one core switch this this switch are networking switch okay so this is networking switch and again each rack itself has their own switch networking switch what is the use of switch let me first explain it whenever you this node d1 want to talk to d2 and d3 so this communication happens so they, they first go to this switch and this switch has the information and they contact each other like this and similarly if rack 1 want to talk to rack 2 then it first go to here and then talks to rack 2 so this way this happens so this is the normal architecture of your uh, normal HDFS cluster so and I wanted to discuss here something like replication factor let me clean it out this diagram again replication factor As it name suggests, you want to replicate a copy of your data. Copy of your data. Replicate it. So, as we have discussed, we have three data now. D1. D2 and D3. And your file. Which is quite big and you divide it in three block a b and c and here we have replication factor value and factor value equal to three so your block a would be stored in this this and this sorry i mean to say this is also a and this is also a Okay. so let me take one more data node here to uh, understand more d4 okay so if because of replication 3 your one block is stored in a in d1 d2 d3 now i want it to store block b so block b would be stored 2 3 and 4 and block c would be stored in here, here, and here. So this is the this way. The each file block has been replicated at three places. Suppose this node crashes, then still we have copy of A here and here and B here and here. And so this is quite resilient to like 
any node crashes and master node named immediately find it out like node 2 is not responding it has crashed so it will it has information like as we have discussed metadata information which block was available on t2 so whatever block was on t2 it will immediately try to copy this node a to to this node 4 and the node b was on this to make it again replication factor to 3 so this is the replication factor so in case of any crashes or something still the data is available and you won't lose the data so this is the replication factor so now let's pick up next topic is rack awareness rack awareness means like similarly as master node like name node has information my which block is stored in which data node and similarly there are rack like let me type in short r1 and r2 and data node d1 d2 and d3 are here here d4 d5 and d6 and d7 let's one more node here so in rack awareness philosophy this name node information is also there like it has rack 1 and it has information 1, 2 and 3 node are there rack 2 has 4, 5, 6 and 7 node so in case of whole rack is gone so still so this is the rack awareness like it it knows like which node was there and from the metadata information it will get to know on which node 1 what block was available on node 2 what block was stored on node 3 what blocks are stored so it can easily recover the whole cluster in case of any failure so this is we say rack awareness philosophy in case of any failure it can recover easily um, let's say move to next demon service this is secondary name node as it name suggests it is not a passive name node it just confusing name we can say what it does actually if you as we have discussed this is the name node it whole information in the RAM all metadata information what secondary no, name node say SNN in short it reads this log made, uh, whatever in memory after in periodic interval and this this information somewhere it's like not directly from RAM it read from some edit log and namespace log which is written in particular time interval like we can say it's particular checkpoint service and it store it reshuffle this whole log and name edit log whatever is required and store persistently in secondary name node similarly in every checkpoint cp2 and cp3 kind of each checkpoint is being created and stored over here suppose this node goes down or crashes so first thing it doesn't automatically no automatic take failover first thing admin has to come in between they will pick up the latest checkpoint information and make this node or they will copy this information in another node and create another master name node so however they are able to do this but they, they definitely have lost some information because this checkpoint will have been taken in some time before the node crashes so that is almost certain you will lose the data 
so this is that's why it is not exactly the rough uh, we can say passive neighborhood but however somehow you are able to get something back uh, whenever the main node goes down so there are other alternatives is also available uh, for the handling of single point of failure we'll see uh, in few moment okay so this is all about uh, secondary name node and secondary name node does heavy input output operation like shuffling of name node and uh, sorry namespace and edit block and it also require use RAM. Okay. okay so this is secondary name node let's see now the underlying file system Sorry. underlying file system of HDFS underlying file system in HDFS HDFS file system is actually an abstract this is not actual file system underneath there is another file system that is either ext4 or ext3 this is just a concept we should not go in depth of this actually right now so whenever your huge file is divided into the block and you send this particular block to store to hdfs what hdfs does is actually it won't store itself it just redirect this and commit this block to ext4 or either ext3 file system so this is the uh, underlying file system of hdfs okay so this this based on this we can change the various configuration to make it different availability or kind of thing from ext4 and ext3 perspective so these are the underlying file system so as we have discussed a lot about hdfs file system so and this is file system so we need some command line utility to access this fine file system like in linux unix we have and even in windows command line utility to access the file so the best thing about hdfs command line interface it is almost similar to unix linux command line utility so it has ls commands which list all the file as you do in unix there's next command mkdir which is used for create directory next command is uh, this yes this is different command copy from local s name service copy data from local so your local machine to hdfs system you want to copy this data so you can use copy from local command and it will copy this data similarly copy to local this is copy from local then copy to local from hdfs to your local file system would be uh, copied then similarly move to local which completely move your file to the local file system and there are some other command like r for removal purpose then tell command for tell something as we are doing in unix linux then ch mode to change the mode actually there is no executable right executable mode is making any difference so its command is still there for other purposes but not for executable purpose and something uh, let me clean it out okay another command which will say set replication minus w to 4 recursively under 
this directory to subdirectory so this is the command whenever as we have discussed there is a default replication factor is 3 but whenever you want to make replication factor to up up or downward you can put value over here like 2 4 or something and it would be changed according to the replication factor will be changed okay so this is all about replication factor okay so let's deep dive into the how we write file into the hdfs file system writing the file in hdfs suppose you have file and which is divided in three block a b or c b and c and there is a rack one has following data node dn1 dn2 and dn3 and rack 2 has uh, dn4 dn5 and dn6 node okay and this is name node so your client code will ask name node give me the information where i can store the data and it will it will say you can store block a to one four and five node so now this client could directly contact with the data node one and ask him to be ready i'm going to store the block a on your machine and dn1 and seems at the same time it also send the information like forward this request to another node 4 and 5 so this information will go to and this is also asked like be ready the block a is coming and it will be stood on you and similarly dn5 so this is low latency because this is inside the rack and this is higher latency because this is communication among it and as soon as it replies yes i am ready this also replies i am ready and this says yes i am ready so send me the block a and it sends the block a and it will be stored over here here and once this is stored over here this this after storing this goes to node 4 it goes to here and this after this it goes to on node 5 this to over here so this is completely synchronous right you cannot write parallelly once block a is written then it again goes and asks for b to be right and similarly it asks i wanted to write block b 4 5 and 6 it return this information and sorry uh, it would be better 2 5 and 6 so it would be block b would be stored over here b b here and b here and similarly c so this way the whole writing is happen into the hdfs cluster and same way whenever reading is something opposite of then with opposite of this and this is self explanatory i believe suppose uh, you want to read the file you will directly go to name node a it will give you the whole information where all the blocks of a b and c is stored from their metadata information after that client will directly contact the data node for reading the file and it will read file from particular like dn1 for block a dn2 for block b and dn6 for block c so it will say read from one two and six node and it will start reading in and create the whole file from the block and return it back to you so this is the reading of the file so i'm not going in depth of reading of the file this is this uh, almost similar uh, opposite of writing the file so now let's pick up next topic is hdfs federation what hdfs federation means as we have discussed there is a master name and it is to hold information into the ram okay so there are 
millions of files are coming and it keep increasing to stores and after some time it is possible your whole new ram is full and you cannot further even the cluster capacity is available you have thousands of nodes one two like there's thousands of nodes in the cluster and cluster capacity is available but your new node is full so you cannot write the file so in such situation what in new generation of hdfs new support has been provided like using the uh, let me clean it up you you just create name based on your requirement keep increasing the name this is name node one this is name node two this is name node three which take care of like there is a one company which deal with the finance data news and social media data this all things is done so you create three name node one take care for finance to related things one take care of news and another is media but still they all are having the same cluster because there are thousands of data nodes in the cluster thousands nodes so this has same communication in the cluster this is also same communication just they have metadata information related to finance this has metadata related to news and this has media only so this this you can see here like single name node responsibility is divided into three so this three name node could have differently and lightly loaded and they could have their own backup like secondary name node something it has their own secondary name node. it would have secondary name node as per so this is hdfs federation where you divide the whole single name of uh, work which is for multiple domain into multiple different name node so this is hdfs federation next topic is high availability of name node. so as we have discussed in generation one there is single point of failure single point of failure but in generation 2 there is a possibility you can create active and passive node so like you could have two name node one is an active another is in passive node what happens like whenever a block is stored or something cluster come up like the all metadata first thing like all metadata in the edge name node is populated only when cluster is started and each name node a data node will say like i am having this block i am having this block kind of thing so this this data node inform to name node so whenever cluster come up this all four data node communicate with the like node one communicate with the name node one data node also communicate with the name node two similarly two also communicate with both the node three also communicate with the both the node and the and so on it will grow, grow. so this both the node in the RAM has the same information and suppose this node crashes so automatically in few moments or, or, or some involvement of admin it can come up and which is having the same information so in previous case using the secondary name node we were losing some information but using this configuration we are not losing any cluster information suppose this node goes down still this node is available so this is high availability which is available in generation 2 of the hdfs so now let's pick up the last topic of this session is parallel copying of data using utility dist 
what is there? Suppose you have one production cluster, another is your UAD cluster, third is your normal dev test cluster. So you and the volume of data is quite huge on the production cluster and you want to copy this whole data in UAT cluster and similarly you want to copy this whole data on the test cluster so it is it will take lot of time to copy this whole data into the one cluster to another cluster so there is one utility which comes with the HDFS that is called disk CP which is distributed copying and which is possible in parallel so you just write the command like this in Hadoop file system dist cp from this hdfs url like name nur1 colon 8020 directory is foo bar to hdfs cluster is uad1 colon 8020 Oh, using this command you can parallelly copy the whole your HDFS data and best thing is like it uses internally map radius to copy this data so it it can easily take care of anything fail or something any copy fail so it's quite resilient and it will completely write in uh, so it's complete right it even it is fail or something so it will map it is will take care of while copying and all this thing uh, in hdfs cluster so a uh, today's discussion we are finishing over here and uh, as we have this uh, discussed today the following topic HDFS design fundamental of HDFS where we have discussed how blocks are stored in the data node and name, name node stores the metadata information and secondly name node works like uh, some checkpoint information is stored to bring back the cluster in case of name node failure and some rack awareness uh, philosophy we understood so how uh, name node can tell you like which node is storing which block something and we have also discussed how to read and write from the HDFS so so this is just conceptually we have seen we haven't seen any uh, API which we will see in few next coming session and we have seen the HDFS federations like how name node uh, can be divided uh, based on their functionality and uh, new generation high availability we have checked we are active passive configuration we have checked we have also checked like one utility which comes with the hdfs that is this cp to copy data from one cluster to another cluster and at the last we have seen the hdfs command line interface which is almost similar to normally available command line interface on linux or unix box and some additional command also we have seen like copy from local copy to local etc so thanks for listening to this session we are finishing over here